This is a follow-up video from our lecture on Monday. We were starting to look at the 68959997 rule, but then using quantiles instead because we can. Computers enable calculations of these quantiles directly instead of having to rely on some cute, fancy, approximate rule. So we were using our shifting and scaling procedure to get a good handle on what was going on uh, here. We were essentially adapting our quantile calculations to any normal distribution with any mean, which is going to involve a shift, and any standard deviation, the square root of the variance, that we want. And this is going to be our scaling. So by shifting and scaling this quantile calculation, we can adapt the quantile calculations to any normal distribution we choose. Why is this important? Well, the central limit theorem tells us that a sample mean thought of as a random variable is approximately normal. Well, by enabling adaption of this quantile calculation, which is happening on a normal distribution, to any normal distribution with mean m and standard deviation s, we can then do an appropriate calculation for whatever whatever normal distribution may be particular uh, to a given application. So what we can do is then to use the central limit theorem is essentially replace m with an estimate of the mean that is based on some data and replace s with an estimate of the standard deviation, again, based on some data. So towards the end of the class, we started looking at um, made up data where there were only three flips of a fair coin. Now we're gonna simulate N flips of a fair coin. And then here we have M replaced by the mean based on the data alone. We have S, replaced with this calculation, which is the standard deviation of the sample mean. Uh, we don't justify that in this class. You might if you took the follow-up course to this, but there has been uh, reference to this both in the uh, proof of the central limit theorem and in the Pluto notebook named central limit theorem. So I'll just point you to those resources for more details, or of course our books. And then here, I'm just going to calculate the two numbers, the two quantiles that sandwich 95% of the area under the distribution for us. So if we were to go through this calculation then, based on only 10 flips of a coin, these two numbers down here, which are interpreted as a confidence interval, capture for us 95%, the range of 95% of the most likely future sample means. That is, we are to think of the sample mean as a random variable. And as if we took a new sample, we would get a new sample mean. Well, these two numbers here tell us the range of future sample means for not all sample means, but 95% of the future sample means will fall within this range. So what this is essentially doing is providing an interval based on the central limit theorem that captures the uncertainty associated with our one sample mean. Based on the central limit theorem, we can represent the uncertainty based on the estimate of the mean here. So we are, in some sense, 95% sure that the true expectation, the population mean, falls within this range. Now, this might seem quite wide to you, knowing that this is a true, truly fair coin. So as I've been arguing in class a lot already, we depend on the sample size going up for convergence of the sample mean to the true expectation, but also for our uncertainty 
now represented by the width of this interval to decrease. So we can verify that convergence in various forms happens as the sample size goes up. And I encourage you to play with these three lines of code. All you really need to do is change this and observe how, on average, the confidence interval will narrow as the sample size goes up. And on average, the confidence interval will widen as the sample size goes down. And in fact, because this all depends on the central limit theorem, you don't need to only sample from the binomial distribution. You could replace here binomial with uh, random data from a gamma distribution, or random data from a normal distribution, or random data from whatever other distribution you might uh, be able to sample data from in R. The central limit theorem tells us that we can use the normal distribution. The normal distribution can be scaled and shifted appropriate to any data set. So we can quantify uncertainty in the true expectation, in this case a mean, using only the data we have in front of us. That turns out to be a pretty powerful technique that we will see again and again in the world of applied statistics.